So it is my great pleasure to present uh, Samanti again, who is a former student. And now he is our only representative in the si Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so he's coming from Finland, and he got his undergraduate education and MA in the University of Helsinki. Mm -hmm. And then he came here because he wanted to become a oceanographer, I suppose. But and the climate was better. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened, I at the time had, had a project with other people in the University of Helsinki whom he knows, mm -hmm. but he didn't know that I know. And I also know his advisor, who is actually doing something on Mars and Venus. He's a planetologist. Okay. And I had an interesting meteorological problem, so it didn't work. But now I think he's working in the sea. <laughs> So eventually, but you got good training here, so you can do things in ocean as well. But I'm sure that the atmospheric boundary layer stuff helps you as well. It's coupled mm -hmm. system. Um, now, SMIT has other interesting hobbies, and apparently it's not only SMIT who has it. Well, you, 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 you probably think that our physical oceanography people are very boring, but... <laughs> But I want to show you that we are not that, that boring. This is a guy, his name is Michael McIntyre, and he's a very famous meteorologist, uh, uh, actually just physical fluid analysis from Cambridge. He is the one who did a lot of work in potential vorticity and geophysical fluid analysis. He even wrote a song, and look how he sings. PD means potential of this. So PD is answer for every problem. In geophysical law analysis. <laughs> Well, all right, so, so this is what uh, people in Cambridge do, but there are also other people. It's certainly not the people from Liverpool. <laughs> no, but they're not also people from Arizona. We have some, somebody who is prominent Planetologist, his name is Adam Showman. And well, when he is working, he sometimes kills my proposals, but he also does other things. <laughs> Showman style. Adam Showman style. <laughs> Showman style. I'm at heart a family man, she's Chinese too, my daughter. Anything planets, landscape, GCM data, I slot. I ride my 10 speed back to work in true tip swindle fashion. But climate modeling has always been my passion. Got food and allergies, can't eat things like a loaf of bread. But don't worry about me, I'll just go to Saigon instead. I love their boba tea. And number fifth. Well, it's very funny. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to see it, um, see me after the seminar on another day. But we need to. We need to show you what our students do. So this is our students here. It's much more serious. I'm not sure everybody knows about it, but uh, this is a matter. <laughs> I think that uh, you got the idea. Why, why is he using a different name? Why do you go by Charles? Oh, that's the, the name the composer. of the composer. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> 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 Just making sure. Just making sure. <laughs> I know, I wish. <laughs> is that the reception we had over? Uh, no, no. It looks, the room looks similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, this I. 
finish with my presentation, and now we shall hear something about science. <laughs> so, go ahead. No, okay, so shall do it. Um, <coughs> thank you, Boris, for that musical introduction. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you for having me here. It's, uh, it's great to be back. The last time I gave a talk in this room, it was my defense. Uh, it was almost exactly one and a half years ago. But today, uh, the topic is very different. There will be no equations. There will be no messy scatter plots. And there will be no confusing boundary layer meteorology terminology. But instead, I'm talking about uh, the use of uh, oceanography and meteorology in uh, ship routing. And this is related to a job I've had uh, a little over a year now as the lead data scientist at a ship routing company, Applied Weather Technology. And what I'll do here, I'll show how we apply oceanography and meteorology in one of, uh, using one of our uh, products as an example. And even though I concentrate on applied weather technology products here, other ship routing companies uh, have similar products that they use for the same purpose. So the central question is, uh, how do we keep ships safe at sea? So having asked that question, the next one could be, uh, what information do ships need for a safe and uh, successful voyage? So let us take like a container ship traveling across the Atlantic. So what kind of information might the captain need uh, for the trip? Well, first of all, weather is important. I mean, captains do not want to end up in, uh, in bad weather. It causes delays, uh, increases fuel consumption, and can, al can also be uh, uh, really bad for the cargo. And related to weather, we have uh, synoptic scale weather systems like extra, extra tropical cyclones, then we have tropical cyclones which are very important and uh, can, can be really a uh, um, pain in our industry. And then we have uh, monsoons, especially in Asia, they are important. Well, obviously related to bad weather, we have uh, waves, which are the major, major hazard for ships at sea. So uh, we need to be able to provide the uh, clients with uh, high-resolution uh, wave data, uh, tell them what the wind generate waves are like, what the swell and significant wave height are, and also if there is a threat for uh, rogue waves. And that's not all. We also need to worry about ocean currents. Um, uh, no ship wants to sail against the western boundary current. So uh, we need to be able to tell our clients where exactly the strongest currents are so they can uh, plan their routes accordingly. And obviously close to ports, the uh, uh, tidal currents are also important, so we need to worry about that as well. And then we have some other things that uh, need to be included, such as uh, vessel icing in the uh, polar areas, um, sea ice, um, and then there are some non uh, oceanographic things such as uh, pri uh, pirate threats that we still need to worry about. So, but before we uh, get to these four points, I'm going to concentrate on these in the presentation and I'll show how we deal with these uh, issues in one of uh, our softwares. But before we get there, uh, a few words about working in the ship routing business. So, when I told my parents that I got a job at a ship routing company, uh, this is what they thought I'd do. <laughs> my mom even gave me a call and asked they if, if they should cancel their trip to California in case I, I, I was going to be sailing in the other side of the, on the other side of the world. Well, um, no such luck. <laughs> uh, this is what I do, which is uh, actually exactly what I did as a grad student. So. <laughs> Some things just never change. So what I do in this company, I'm in charge of the, uh, uh, all their meteorological and oceanographic model data. I make sure that all the data is downloaded from many different sources and processed and then converted to uh, the formats that our softwares need. We also have a few uh, in-house models uh, that I'm in charge of. Uh, but uh, to be honest, now, it, it is a lot of coding, but it's not just coding. I do a, quite a bit of a consultation uh, related to uh, different kinds of uh, model data. Uh, then uh, 
I reply to many client requests. Clients often you know, want different kinds of uh, data products. And I act as a model data related contact person among our many uh, international offices. So there is more to this work than just coding. So a few words about the company I work for. So it's called Applied Weather Technology. It leads the uh, uh, shipping industry with about uh, 50,000 ship voyages routed annually. Uh, we have uh, developed many award-winning fleet management tools and this onboard route optimization system, BVS, short for Bon Voyage System, uh, it's used in over uh, 5,000 5, ships uh, all around the world. And the main things that we do, we provide weather routing and marine weather forecast for ships. It means that we have people called routers sitting in various offices around the world that design and uh, update uh, routes for various ships, both uh, you know, cargo ships and uh, cruise ships so that you know, they can uh, optimize their routes so that you know, they can save fuel and uh, be safe. So this is like the goal of our company as written by our, by our marketing department. So we want to make shipping smarter, safer, and more profitable while reducing environmental impact. So as I said, we have offices in uh, 12 different countries. The headquarters are situated at, uh, in, this, in Silicon Valley, that's where I'm at. Um, but we have quite a few people also working in New York City, mm -hmm. and then some people working in Shanghai, London, Chicago, Oslo, and Hong Kong, for instance. So how do, let's get to the next part of the presentation. How do the people working in these various location routing sifts, how do they apply meteorology and uh, uh, oceanography in these products? So this is the uh, system I'm going to be using uh, as an example. It's called the Bon Voyage uh, Route Optimization System. It was designed from the ground up with the captain's need in mind. So what it allows you to do uh, is this. You can pick a departure port and then the uh, port of uh, destination. Uh, and then you can optimize your route. You can give uh, different kinds of weather-related uh, constraints. Let's say a ship that cannot handle large waves. So you want to be sure that you know, the route you take only includes waves that are, let's say, lower than five meters. So you can uh, uh, give that, that as an input, and then the system will calculate the best uh, route. And that's uh, based on the uh, available weather and uh, wave forecast information. And obviously, these routes need to be uh, modified often when the uh, uh, voyages progress because we all know that weather forecasts are not really reliable in the long term. I would say that we can maybe rely on them up to five days, but maybe even seven days. But anything beyond that is I, I call the fantasy land. Well, what's that red-green symbol right next to the Yucatan Peninsula, southwest of Cuba? Mm. Is that a ship? This is a ship. I just like uh, started this imaginary voyage from uh, St. Petersburg going mm. somewhere. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can on the BBS display, you can see the route. Like uh, in the perfect world, I would have like finished it actually. I could end up here in Venezuela. So you can see the route and then you can uh, browse through the route. You can see the ship moving along the route and then you can see how the weather changes. And here are the like, different variables available. Uh, I don't know if you can see them, but I will cover most of them in this presentation. And then the data that's needed for this system, it's something that the uh, users install on their uh, computers, but it needs weather and wave data. So this data is delivered either via email or uh, via broadband. So let's start from the first uh, point that I had on the second slide, weather. So the ships definitely need weather information. So we use uh, global weather data from uh, two uh, centers, the National Centers for environmental, Pro environmental Prediction here in the US, and then uh, European Center of, uh, for Medium Range Weather Forecast in UK. So we <coughs> use their global uh, data. We download it uh, two to four times a day. 
and uh, they give us forecasts from 10 to uh, 16 days long. And then we can display them uh, for our users on the BVS uh, display. Here you can see the mean sea level pressure and the 10 meter wind speed. Uh, our uh, weather analysts then uh, create these uh, fronts. And these, I don't know if you can really see, it's like not a really cl clear picture, but you can see the weather, whether it's raining or snowing or if there are thunderstorms. And these weather types are based on the uh, presentation data from the GFS model, which our algorithm takes in and then creates the uh, appropriate different weather types. Well, related to weather, we have this one big issue that I already mentioned, which is the uh, tropical cyclones. And they can be a major headache, especially uh, during the, uh, well, in the uh, Pacific, the typhoon season runs a lot longer than it does here. But here it's like uh, the hurricane season, it's a really busy time for the routers. And the reason is obvious, like, I mean, no ship wants to end up in a tropical cyclone. We all remember what happened to the uh, uh, El Faro last year with uh, Hurricane Joaquin. So it's really um, important that these routes are designed in such a way that we keep ships away from uh, tropical cyclones. But unfortunately, the global weather prediction systems still can't deal very well with uh, tropical cyclones. They are better when it comes to extratropical systems. But uh, tropical cyclones are difficult, especially when it comes to intensity. Take Hurricane Matthew, for instance, uh, just uh, about a month ago. Almost all the global models uh, forecast it to stay as a minimal category one hurricane when it entered the Caribbean. Instead, it just uh, exploded into a category five hurricane uh, on the Saffron Simpson scale. And none of the models were predicting that in that time frame. So this is a reason why we do not want to rely on just the GFS model data when it comes to tropical cyclones. Instead, we use the forecast from the uh, issuing agencies. For, so for this area, we would uh, see what the National Hurricane Center has to say. Then we take the uh, forecast winds and pressures from the National Hurricane Center, and we assimilate them into the GFS model data. So what we do is this, in the vicinity of tropical cyclones, we uh, modify the GFS uh, near surface winds and pressures so that what the clients see here corresponds to what the uh, official agency is predicting. So uh, in this example image, we can see a uh, Hurricane Matthew. The track is given here with the red color. Uh, the yellow area gives you the uh, hurricane force winds and the blue area gives you the tropic tropical storm force winds. So this is, this is all good, but uh, as I said, we still need uh, better products uh, to predict uh, tropical cyclones. So in the future, we are looking into something like this, uh, tropical cyclone probabilities from uh, Storm Geo Houston. The full name of this product is, let's see if I get this right, it's a multi-model uh, multi ensemble-based uh, tropical cyclone proximity probabilities. So I will next explain what exactly is this. So a little sidestep. Um, what is an ensemble forecast? With ensemble forecast, we attempt to uh, create a representative sample of the possible future state of a system. And in this case, it is the uh, atmosphere. So uh, we can take our numerical weather prediction system, which has some initial conditions as input. Then we can tweak those initial conditions a little bit. So we end up with, say, 20 different initial conditions. And then we can run the model, say, 20 times, and we uh, end up with uh, 20 different forecasts. And these we can then call ensemble forecasts. And here is an example uh, for a tropical depression that later became Hurricane Katrina. So we, here we have the uh, future tracks of the cyclone from uh, I think uh, six different or seven different ensemble members. We can then use these uh, uh, ensemble tracks to calculate different uh, probabilities. And this is where we come to this product that we, are, we will start using in our systems. 
So it looks something like this. So what are we looking at here? Let's take the uh, northern tip of the Philippines here as an example. So the yellow color here tells us that this point has the uh, five-day probability of a center of a tropical cyclone passing within a, uh, 125 miles of this point. The probability would be 60%. So it's sort of like an uncertainty cone, but instead of being based on historical forecast track errors, like is the case with the uh, uh, NHC cone that you always see in their forecasts, this, is, this cone here is actually based on the uh, prevailing weather conditions, which is a lot better way of doing that. Moving on. So high winds, as in tropical cyclones, create high waves. And we need to be able to provide our customers with uh, high resolution wave model data. So uh, at AWT, we run our own in-house uh, wave model, which is a modified version of the NOAA's uh, WaveWatch 3 model. We run our own wave model for two different reasons. First of all, I mentioned that we modify the GFS winds uh, in the vicinity of uh, tropical cyclones. When, uh, well, because we do that, we can't really take the wave model data from NOAA because in that case, the wind field and the wave field would not be in sync. So instead, what we do is that we take the modified GFS wind data and we force our wave model with those winds. So that way we can uh, get waves and winds that are actually in sync. Another reason for this is that the operational NOAA wave model, uh, it does not de deal well with uh, when it comes to separating the swell and the wind waves from the wave spectrum. It actually does a really horrible job with that. So for that reason, uh, WT developed its own uh, post-processing for the model that does a much better job. So here is an example. So we have uh, the significant wave height, which is a combination of the swell and the wind waves. Here we have the swell and the wind waves. Now, uh, one thing that clients always ask is uh, how uncertain are these wave forecasts? And up to this point, we really haven't had a good measure for this. But we have lately started uh, looking into ensemble-based uh, uncertainties. And uh, this is a really uh, simple little product that I developed for our routers to use when they uh,